thanks for watching and today I would like to show you how to show something is one to one or onto and find a null space and the range but without all this nonsense of what pivots. So let's do it a bit more abstractly. And the transformation I want to consider today is very nice and what's called symmetrization. So define T to be from the set of two by two matrices to the set of two by two matrices where T of A equals to one half A plus A transpose. And at the end, I will tell you something really cool about this. But here's just one example. Let's say T of one, two, three, four. Well, that's one half times one, two, three, four. And then you transpose it and transpose just means you flip it along the diagonal. So one, three, two, four. And then it becomes one half of, let's say, two, five, and then five, and eight. And if you want, that's uh, one, five halves, five halves, and four. Particularly notice what's cute, what do you know about this matrix? Well, it turns out it's a symmetric matrix, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so that's why it's what's called symmetrization of a matrix. Okay, and um, what do I want to show first of all, just as an exercise that show that it's linear? So how do you show a linear, uh, how do you show a transformation is linear? Remember that T of A is one half A plus A transpose. Well, then you literally show it's linear. You show that it's additive and scalar multiplicative. So let's show that T of A plus B, almost like Tabrizian, okay, but not right now. <laughs> so T of A plus B is one half times A plus B plus a plus B transpose, but what you know about transpose, and it's ironic, but the transpose is linear, so A plus B transpose is A transpose plus B transpose. So A plus B plus A transpose plus B transpose. And then of course you can group the A's together and the B's together, so one half a plus A transpose, and you can also you know, uh, expand it out, so one half B plus B transpose, but that's just T of A plus T of B. So T satisfies that, and then let's also show that T of C A, so here C is in your field, so in this case. My class is just real complex numbers, sorry. Uh, sorry, algebraists. But, um, so then that's one half CA plus CA transpose. Hmm. Meow, because it's a cat, okay? And then that's one half CA plus, again, out of, you can pull constants out of the transpose. So it's CA transpose. And then you can just factor out the C, so one half A plus A transpose, and that's literally C of T A. So T of C A is C T of A, and that's why this transformation is linear. And the next question is, let's find a null space. So, again, okay, write this down if you haven't because stuff is getting serious now. So let's find a basis for null of A. Or I guess in this case, null of T. Okay, what is the null space? Remember, it's a set of vectors such that T of X equals to zero. Or in this case, the set of two by two matrices such that T of A is in this case the zero vector is the zero matrix 
So, just suppose T of A, and again, that's the zero matrix, which in this case is 0, 0, 0, 0. And suppose A is of the form A, B, C, D. And we want to find what A, B, C, and D are. Then what we get? So we get 1 half uh, A plus A transpose equals to 0, 0, 0, 0. The 1 half we can just divide by it so it disappears. And then we're left with A, B, C, D plus, remember you flip it, A, C, B, D. And that's 0, 0, 0, 0. So what we're left with is basically 2a, b plus c, c plus b, and 2d is 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now we can just compare. So we have 2a equals 0, b plus c equals 0, c plus b equals 0, which is the same thing, and 2d is 0. So basically, A is 0, C is minus B, and D is 0. And what does that tell us about our matrix? Our matrix A is A, B, C, D, which is 0, mi 0 B, minus B, 0. And that's B times 0, 1, minus 1, 0. In other words, in this case, the null space is just a set of all multiples of this matrix. So the null space is just a span of that matrix. So null of t is just a span of 0, 1, minus 1, 0. And notice, this vector itself, it's linearly independent. So if it's linearly dependent, you just kill it. Uh, and therefore, we have a basis. So uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0 is a basis for the null of t. And, uh, I also want to say, so it turns out, if you think about this, if 1 half A plus A transpose equals to the zero matrix, then you can find that A transpose equals minus A. So really what the null space in this case is, it's a set of anti-symmetric matrices. The one where you, if you take the transpose, you get minus your matrix, and for two by two, they just look like that. It's zero on the diagonal, and then all the other terms, they get the flip term is minus that. And again, we didn't use any pivots or anything, so that's nice. And of course, next question is, is t one to one? Here's a nice thing. One to one is this complicated definition, but for linear algebra, it's very easy. Namely, t is one to one, if and only if the null space is trivial. The null space is just a zero vector. Well, we just found that the null space is non-trivial because it's a span of a non-zero vector. So here the answer is no. Then the next question is, um, let me think, what should I do first? Uh, yeah, let's find a rank. So, and the rank of t, so again, forget number of pivots and all that garbage. The rank of t is just the dimension of the image of t. That is, what does t do? It takes a vector space v and you have this vector space w. The image of t, or the range of t, is just the set of all possible values of t. 
And it turns out, without even finding that image, it's very easy to find the rank, because there's a thing called the rank nullity theorem. So by rank nullity, all it says is that the dimension of the null space plus the rank of t is the dimension of your vector space v. Okay, and it's good because it sort of says that you know uh, the null space measures how bad your linear transformation is. The rank measures how good your linear transformation is. This says they balance out. And uh, this is good because, again, we are able to find a rank without even calculating the image. So in this case, the rank of t is just the dimension of v, which is, in this case, the dimension of the 2 by 2 matrices minus the dimension of the null space. Well, the dimension of 2 by 2 matrices is 2 times 2, which is 4. We found the null space is just spanned by one vector. So the null space is one dimensional, so it's 3. And so what does that say? It says that the image of T, it's a three-dimensional subspace of the two by two matrices. So in particular, it cannot be the whole space. And that leads me to the next question. Is T onto? Onto M two by two. And onto just means that T of V is the whole space W. In other words, the image of T is all of W. And I just said no because uh, one condition is that the rank has to be the same as the dimension of W. So no, because basically rank of T which is again the dimension of the image of t equals to 3, which is strictly less than the dimension of w, which is 4. So w is the 2 by 2 matrices. So in particular, the image of t cannot be w. Otherwise, it would be 4 dimensional. And in fact, last but not least, let's try to find um, the image, or let's find the range of t. And I like to remind you, t of a is one half a plus a transpose. And it turns out, so remember in linear, uh, elementary linear algebra, you did again this garbage with, you know, find the basis for the column space by looking at the pivots. It turns out there's a much easier way to find the image. Namely, all you need to do is calculate t at every basis vector. So, uh, fact, so the image of t is just the set of tv, or I guess if you want tv1, or I guess set of tv, where v is in your basis. Beta is a basis for v. Now, there's a very easy uh, um, basis for the two by two matrices. So here, beta is just a set of matrices of the form 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. And I feel this theorem makes sense because look, what is the image? It's the set of all Tx, where x is any vector in V. But look, any vector in V, you can write this in terms of those matrices. So in particular, if you just know what T of those basis vectors are, you know what all of T is. So what this says is that the image of T is in the span of t of 1, 0, 0, 0, t 
of 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and t of 0, 0, 1, 0, and t of 0, 0, 0, 1. And then you just calculate that. So using the definition of t, and you can do that. So I think uh, t of 1, 0, 0, 0, I think it'll become still 1, 0, 0, 0. The other one will be 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. And notice one of those vectors is redundant, so if you want to find a basis, you just remove that vector and you see, oh, this is linearly independent, so a basis is simply 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, half, 1, half, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. In particular, what is the rank? Notice it's three-dimensional, just as we predicted. And again, how many pivots did we use? None. So that's what makes it so great. And just a little remark also about this. It turns out this one has a much nicer description. Because if you take the linear combo of those vectors, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, b times 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, and then c times 0, 0, 0, 1, then you get the set of matrices of the form a, b over 2, b over 2, and c. And the factor of one half doesn't really matter um, because b is arbitrary. So really what the range is, or what the image of t is, is the set of two by two symmetric matrices. So image of t is just your two by two symmetric matrices. And this is why T is what's called the symmetrization of A. Because remember in our very first example, we noticed, oh, T of A is actually symmetric. And here's the cool thing. So again, what did we know? We knew that the null space is the anti-symmetric matrix, a set of anti-symmetric matrices. The image is a set of two by two symmetric matrices. And the cool thing is, maybe let me finish with that, it turns out any matrix, you can write it in terms of a symmetric matrix and an anti-symmetric matrix, namely in the following form, 1 half A plus A transpose plus 1 half A minus A transpose. So that was T of A. That's something related, and you can show that this is always symmetric, which is basically what this is saying, and this is always anti-symmetric. And this is really the analog of even function and odd function, but for matrices. Because remember, any function in calculus, you can write it in terms of an even function and an odd function. So this is pretty neat. All right, I hope you like this excursion into abstract linear algebra. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.